why is it that women expect perfection from a husband? And then when things are not 100% in her favor, she wants to jump ship. Welcome my friends. Welcome to another session with the older man. Today, I want to talk about this subject because listen, being married for 19 years, having gone through two previous divorces, I can tell you marriages are freaking hard. But you know what's harder? Especially when you have kids? Being a single mother. Listen to this woman. She breaks it down nicely. I have been a single mom for all of two years and I have to say, I hate it here. I don't hate being a mom. I don't hate having kids, but I hate the fact that I only had two options. Either stay in an unhealthy, dysfunctional relationship or do it all on my own. And see, when I was a stay-at-home mom, I did the cooking, the cleaning. I was a primary person in charge of taking care of the children. And here I thought that that was a totally different category than being a working mom. As a working mom, I'm literally still doing all of the same stay-at-home mom shit, just on a different schedule. But now, with the added mental stress load of how do I pay every bill by myself. And that's not even the part that frustrates me. The kicker is that this is culturally normal and even embrace that if you're a single mom you're just gonna struggle and that's it like I could be on the brink of a mental breakdown literally underwater telling people like I do not know how to make this better and someone will ask me what's wrong are you okay no I'm not And the response is, well you know it's hard out here for everybody and I get it we all have our challenges we're all going through our own struggles but why is it culturally normal for this to be the only other option like at this point I'm about to start dating other moms to see who wants to co-mother together because the fact that we're all just isolated but going through the same exact challenges at the same time just feels ridiculous so listen guys you know the drill if you've been here before subscribe come on give me some love hit the thumbs up button i would love to get 2000 likes in this video so that the algorithm can start pushing this content out to more and more people who need this message and of course listen if you need to book a session with me log in to askanolderman.com book a session very inexpensive and if you have a quick question that you just want me to answer quickly, quickly, go and join on Instagram and always send me a voice message. I respond quickly by voice messages. I'm not the one that's going to be typing and doing all of that crap. That takes too much time. It's easier for me to listen to you. Boom. Send a quick voice message. Solve the problem. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay. So this lesson is for the ladies. And there is a very distinct reason why I want to make this video today. Because I have a very good friend here in Dubai who's always complaining about her husband. The husband pays 100% of the bills. She has a maid. She got two kids. But yet she's out there hustling, right? And she killing herself trying to become the man trying to work like men and I, I i just but of course she's not happy with her husband he she feels that he's lazy because he's not taking care of the kids she he's not helping out with the kids as much as she wants him to do so this man has a maid a wife right and she wants him to go even further and make sure that he interacts with the kids more I know right now that a lot of you ladies out there are going, holy shit, I would die for that. I would kill for that. All I need to do is put my foot up. I don't have to cook and clean. I just have to show up. But yet she wants to go out and work. She wants her own money. She wants her own thing. She don't have to do it. She wants to do it. But in the meantime, the man now has to give up his freaking time when he needs to relax because he has a high powered job. He has to give up his time to spend time with the kids so she can go and make her money. That isn't going to benefit the family. It's just going to benefit her. Remember guys, men work their asses off so that they can protect and provide for a wife and a family. In this case, he's gone even one step further. The wife don't even have to work, not even in the house as much, but that's not enough. And I like how this judge put this woman in, the, in her place because this is where we are. This is where we are with the females now. 
Mr. and Mrs. Rivera, I'm glad you're getting a divorce. Mrs. Rivera, I will say this to you. You're foolish. You had a good thing. As soon as it wasn't a perfect thing, it made you angry. Nobody's ever going to be perfect. You most certainly are not perfect. And the next guy you get is not going to be perfect. And unless you're willing to put up with a little bit of, you know, they say for better or for worse for a reason. It's not going to be all you know, lollipops and sunshine. And when it's not lollipops and sunshine for your husband, you at least give him a lollipop. You might not be able to make the sun shine, but you can give them a lollipop, and you didn't do it. You decided that your marriage was about you, for you, and because of you, and when he hit a rough patch, you were like, I'm sick of you. I'm tired of it. You're not a king and wonderful anymore because you're not doing everything I want to. You're no longer Mr. Perfect, and I have no obligation to give anything to you. That's tired, and that's sad, and it's good. She wants to be the man. This is the problem that a lot of women are facing with this feminist movement. But now they're realizing, holy crap. Before I had a man and a husband who was providing, let's just say 80%, 20% to the household. She just had to provide 20%. Most women want to have a career. Well, I don't believe that's true. I don't believe that for a second. You're telling me what? you've been told and what you've been told to believe not what you actually believe and not what's actually the case no i don't believe for a second that most women want to work and most mm. women want to have a career that's pr that's propaganda i mean you can't say honestly that you think that most women want to work and also say that uh, women have equal intelligence as men because if they have equal intelligence as men what intelligent person would choose to work if they had a choice not to i know a man wouldn't if given the choice no, I know that most women don't want to work. I don't need to see the statistics. I know that most women don't want to work because I work. So I know what it's like. No, you can only convince a woman or anyone else uh, that it's wonderful. It's just so fulfilling to dress up in business clothes and go to an office all day if they've never worked. You can maybe sell that message to young, inexperienced people. But anyone who has been in the workforce for any length of time uh, will tell you it is not exactly living the dream. But you know who is living the dream? You know who really is living the dream? Married women in Dubai, married women in Saudi Arabia, and not just because they get to go on shopping sprees with their husbands, you know, gold credit cards, but because due to the fact that they have so much support from their family, so much support from their husbands, so much support from their fathers, so much support from what you would call patriarchy, you probably didn't know that women in the UAE and women in Saudi Arabia own a higher percentage of small and medium-sized businesses than women in America by at least 10%. That's ownership, that's entrepreneurship, not employeeship. But of course, they're oppressed, right? Now, most people don't want to work. Now, obviously, there are exceptions. And there are people who can, you know, genuinely derive a lot of satisfaction from their work. Uh, but we all know that they could find infinite other ways to achieve that and better than that uh, level of satisfaction if they weren't wage slaves and had control of their time. You know, the majority of my viewers are just average people, average, everyday, hardworking people all over the world. I am talking to the average woman and the average man. Most of us, we have to contribute 50 50 when it comes to a union a marriage a living whatever the hell you have we are contributing 50 50 but the whole fns movement have pushed all of you women into this independent way of thinking do you understand that i, I want you all to understand the word independent it means that doing it on your own you only have to depend on yourself how is that benefiting you the problem is if you are on the edge if you are not taking care of yourself completely, who's going to help you? Ah, my government husband will help me out. Think that they're independent. Well, how are you independent when you're on Section 8? How are you independent when you have food stamps or WIC or Medicare? How are you independent? No, you are not independent for the black man. Now you're independent for your white boyfriend, Joe Byron, the government. You're dependent. Because what, what, is, what, what is the plan? Hey, we're going to take Tyrone out the house. 
You don't got to worry about Tyrone paying the rent. Here you go. Here's some Section 8. You don't got to worry about Tyrone bringing food home. Here you go. Here's some food stamps. You don't got to worry about Tyrone taking care of the baby. Here's some wink and some Medicaid. And so they have tricked women into thinking that they're independent when they're just dependent on the government. And at any point in time that that white man or that government wants to kick you out of their shit because you ain't clean the house they wanted to or the fact that you let Tyrone stay over there last night and they found out, they're going to kick your black ass on the street. And all Tyrone wanted you to do was shut up and give him some head every now and then. And there you go. The small price a woman has to pay to be with a man, especially the father of her child. And I'm only talking to the woman who actually made a decision, a right decision to be with the man that she would want to have a child with. But then they have gotten bored. It's not enough sex. He's working too hard. He's not in the house. I'm talking to you ladies. The women I'm not talking to are the single mothers who decided they're going to have a child out of wedlock. It's, they, they either tried to trap the man, didn't work. They had the man in the house with them. The pregnancy was not planned and they had a pregnancy out of wedlock, right? And she refused to have an abortion, refused plan B. All the other 17, 18 different methods of birth control failed. I'm not talking to you because you did not make a commitment to be with the man in the first place. I'm talking to the woman who decided to leave a man that had already committed to her, married, legally married or not. The man said, hey, I'm willing to be here for the child as best as I can. I got to hustle, I got to work. And the woman said, I'm, and the woman said, all of my needs are not being met, so I don't want any of them. Logic will tell any normal man, listen, if you're getting 50% of your needs and bills being paid, why would you leave or why would you kick out a man who's contributing not only his money, but his energy, attention, and time, not only to you, but to your child, which is essential for his development. But you're so damn selfish, you don't even think about how it will affect the kids. That is the problem with modern women today. They don't even think beyond their own, I'm not happy self. That is what blows my freaking mind. I'm contradictory. It don't matter what the f you think they are. Do you want a husband or not? You come in here talking critically about men. Do you want one? Do you want a man? If you want a man, become more desirable to men. If you don't want a man, you don't got to do nothing to be, be more desirable to men. You don't even want a fucking man. But if you do want a man and you're not willing to adjust yourself to be more desirable to men, you're fucking delusional. You're the problem. If you don't want a man, it don't matter. But if you do want a man, you better find out what the fuck they think and how they feel. Or keep doing whatever you've been doing. And you and your friends sit around each other talking about what y'all what y'all think y'all know about men and drinking all that wine and shit, getting all them yeast infections and just talking to each other shit that y'all know nothing about. Then you choose to leave and then realize how freaking hard it is. It's not easy out there being a single mother. Because if the man is in the house to regulate every single thing you got your protection if a man is in the house more than likely a burglar won't choose your house to rob you but the problem with most modern women is that they miss those wild times that they went through in their 20s early 20s the wild crazy times the ones that every single woman have told you you needed to do the one that you got addicted to because i can tell you it's wild and crazy you miss that and you want to bring some of that back, that feeling of, oh, different man every single week. Oh, that was great. Now you only got one. It gets boring very quickly. And that's the stimulation that you're missing because you screwed yourself in your 20s, mm, literally. But you have messed up yourself mentally. And so you're left in a relationship where you feel like you're not getting that satisfaction, that excitement all the time. So I'm here to tell you ladies that you have to suffer through that 
because there are no alternatives. Men aren't marrying single mothers. They're not. And if, the, if you do find a man who wants to marry you as a, uh, and take on the responsibility as a single father, he's not the man that you're going to keep. Why? Because more than likely, he's a simp. He's a guy that's going to be there for you. Yes, honey, yes, 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 yes. He's a nice guy that's coming to rescue you. And you will abuse that poor sucker because you're back to square one. You're back with a man, one dick again. You see how this don't make any sense? Same one dick you had with the baby's father, but now you've left the baby's father. You've left the one person that your kids love and brought in a stranger into your house because you wanted multiple dicks. But after you go through that for four, five, six months, a year, two years, you realize you need the security of that one dick. And every single time I will tell you single mothers, go back to the baby's father. Go back to that man who impregnated you. It would be the best thing for you and for the child. Start anew, start dating again. I'm trying to give you guys solution instead of just breaking you guys down all the time. I want to freaking give you solutions. Because bringing a strange dick in is only going to be a big problem. Does it work out? Yes, it works out sometimes. But there are many channels like this who are waking men up to the horrors of being a single father. Because we men know. If a woman has a child, there's no upside for you as a man coming in and taking care of that child. Because if you get in a relationship with that girl, what's up happening is you have to support that child that isn't yours. You build a bond and attachment with that child. And then let's say the girl breaks up with you, it's going to hurt What do you more. mean by support? When the man gets in a relationship with you, he's not just getting in a relationship with you. He's going to have to take that child on at some point. So my point is, is that when he takes you on and that child, he's going to bear responsibility for that child as well. But the problem is that he's not going to have the same authority. He won't be able to discipline that child the way he wants because it's not his kid. So he has responsibility without authority. Responsibility without authority is slavery. So he ends up having to take care of that kid. Let's say y'all break up. Now he loses access to that kid, which he ended up developing a bond with, and he loses you. So it's going to hurt two, three times more. Stepdaddy game is an L for most guys. Now, has it worked out for quite a few single fathers? Yes. Is it the majority? No. The large majority of single fathers live in quiet desperation and pain. They're usually living with a controlling wife. The kids he cannot discipline. It's a nightmare with the original father. She still have a relationship with that man. She's bonded to him for life. These are all the problems that that poor man has to go through. And most men these days know that there's no benefit to him. He's just providing for another man's seed. A child is a lot of work. Life is a lot of work. Survival, even as a single person on your own, is a lot of work. By the time you go home, to f by the time you get out of your nine to five job and get home and relax, right? And take care of your health and cook. The alarm is going off for you to repeat it again the next day. Most people live for weekends. Most people in the West live for weekends. It's not a pretty sight being an adult. Do you know what? I am 34, I am single, I am childless, and I just moved flat all by myself. I rented a car, I packed up my stuff, I packed up the car, I went to the new place, I unpacked it, I went back to my old place, I did a second round, and I did it all by myself without the help of a man. And do you know what, ladies? I got something to tell you. It was fucking shit. It was fucking shit. It was really, really, really hard. It was exhausting. Get back on Hinge. Honestly, it's not worth it. So those women who don't realise how easy they've got it when a man is paying 50% of the bills and contributing to 50% of the, the work that requires for the child. Hey, stick with 50% instead of trying to get 100% of nothing. Because women make these emotional decisions. It just drives me insane. Men don't have that delusion. No one is rescuing our asses. We know that we got a freaking hustle to become somebody that you would want and we bust our asses to be accepted by you right and then you accept us suck us dry and leave please tell me how the hell can we solve this problem when women are just giving up when men hit a rough patch when you all have to do a little work women in the past didn't do this shit. you all focus so much on 
him getting a little bit of extra on the side. It's all about the sex for the, a lot of you women. I just don't understand it. Oh, he's going to cheat. He's going to cheat. He's going to cheat. That's all you think about. Life is a lot more complex than him putting his penis in a little wet hole somewhere else. Now, if he's giving his contribution money that should be going to the house to some other woman outside, that's a concern, especially if it's hurting your home. If it isn't hurting your home, you don't know shit about it, leave it alone. Enjoy your husband, enjoy your life. Here's an old woman, and they don't make them like this anymore. Well, you got to listen to her, because she got it. She just brought it home. I just want you to look at her face. This is why you got to listen to the older folks, man. You don't ever worry about whether or not your man has got other women. No? Not if he's doing what he's supposed to do at home. Oh, okay. All right. Why would I worry? Because I would think you would want him to yourself. You don't want to have to share no man with another woman. Well, how would you ever know the difference? Well, I don't, I don't know. Well, if I guess if you look for the difference, you'd probably find it. But you look, you, to me, you just waste a lot of your time that you could be doing something you like to do to trying to follow some man. Yeah, I agree with that. So, you got the best. You got the best advice. You so smart. If he got somebody else, and what if I found out? What then? What am I gonna do? Leave and go where? I don't know. I prayed for the type of man I wanted, and I got pretty much that. Is he perfect? Absolutely not. But, you know, no. he has a lot of the qualities. No. no. He has a lot of the qualities that uh, that I love, and we're having a really good time, and I'm enjoying life. So there is hope, women, ladies. You, 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 I mean, if you saw the eye roll, look at the eye roll. I'm going to play it back here, right? Now look at that poor man's face. When you women don't understand how you're literally killing your husbands, killing your partners, when you can go out and embarrass him in public like that, my wife would never, ever, ever humiliate me like that. No, you're not perfect. No. Of course. But it don't have to be said. It's basically humiliated her man. So most women just don't understand what men have to go through with you because you constantly and only thinking about your happiness. Most men suffer in marriages. Why? Because it's cheaper to keep her. That's it. Because we know that we're going to get screwed if we leave or even if you leave, we're screwed. There's no justice for man in marriages. We know that. So, you know what? If we messed up, we just have to endure it and get our happiness somewhere else. But this video here brings it home even more on why you need a partner. Because you ladies don't see the long term, right? But I want you to watch this video. Listen very carefully. Are going to work until they die, and Gen Z is going to have to work even longer. Let me guess, that study didn't mention Gen X. But you can add us to the list because we're going to work until we die too. We wish we were only working for 45 years, nine to five. We've been working since we were little kids. And the closer we get to retirement age, the farther it looks away. You can't save something you don't have, and a lot of Gen Xers don't have any money saved for retirement. We've been plagued with financial crisis after financial crisis. Housing crisis after housing crisis. Rising inflation and let's throw some student loan debt in there. Gen X makes up 38% of all student loan debt in this country, and that's more than any other generation. They'll be paying on that shit long after they're dead. Couple all of that with the fact that a lot of Gen Xers are caring for their elderly parents as well as their grown children, and well, I mean, just do the math. And the worst part is we're closer to retirement age, so we have a lot less time to save for it. By the time we actually get to retirement age, Social Security is going to be, like, bankrupt, so there's going to be nothing. So add us to the pile, because we'll be working until we're dead, too. That's why you need to stay together. That's why you need a partner. This is reality right here. I'm a Gen X, okay? Now, I was smart enough to have had a father 
who taught me the value of investing, who taught me the value of putting off today's pleasure so that you can benefit 20, 30 years down the line. But 99.9% .9 of average people didn't do this. And so you're living apart, paying one apartment fee over here, one housing fee over here, both of you living apart, paying two rents, less ta uh, paying more taxes individually. You're screwing yourselves instead of sacrificing and going through life and compromising. Listen to that word, compromising with each other. Stop being independent. You all have to be interdependent, meaning you can live on your own, but it's more beneficial if you are interdependent. That's how my wife and I do it. We're interdependent. She can easily move out of my ass tomorrow, have a very comfortable life. I can do the same thing. I'm set on my side. She's set on her side. Will the money stretch straight through to our retirement as healthy people? No, but I know that I have alternatives that basically will be paying me because I prepared for my long-term future. So point I'm trying to get across you guys is stay together, work it out. If you can work through the hardest times, you always come out on the other end stronger. But you all have to have a mindset. Both parties have to mi have a mindset. I have to give up something to get something bigger. Listen again. In every single relationship, that is what you need. You need to invest something to get a bigger return later. That is it. That means saying yes to your husband or boyfriend or living partner, whatever the hell you want to call him. That means overlooking some mistakes that he made, overlooking some mistakes she made. Fortunately, this is the modern reality we live in, but you all have to get together. You have to be interdependent. I don't like the word codependent because basically I mean codependent, in my, my opinion, a codependent means that you're depending on each other, but it's almost like it's an addictive type of dependency. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's just how we look, interpret words. But interdependent is what you should be looking for with your partner. You're better off together than you are on your own. And I'm not just thinking about the financial parts. I'm talking about for the child. Because staying together, because once you have a child, it's no longer about you. This is what you guys got to understand. It's no longer about you. It's about that DNA that you're passing on for your for your future 30 uh women between the ages of 25 and 44 over it is going to be over half of yep. women of marriageable age will be single for the rest of their lives they will be unmarried and childless during those ages by 2030 which is like a very very steep incline in fact they are so certain of this that they did this research on morgan stanley so their investors would know what to invest in in the coming decade wow so they're <laughs> Invest in box wine, right? And yep. invest in cat toys. Invest in um. Yeah, in, it's not a joke, guys. When we say in, in ovum freeze, twenty thirty. Um, that is some scary statistics. Learn to compromise and work with a man. The majority of women who are still single in their thirties, forties, and fifties, they do not have the capability to work with another human being. They have no relationship skills. This is the problem. They prefer to go and say yes, Massa, to their boss, right? Yes, 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 to their boss. But when it comes to their man at home, you ain't a boss of me, even though he's paying more than 50% of the bills. Make it make sense. And he's not gonna fire you. But the minute the boss at work, you're big boss at work. But when he sees that he has an opportunity to cut costs, he's bringing in AI, he's bringing in a younger version of you, the bit more educational skills, different experience, you're screwed. But hey, he's your boss. 
You say yes to him. You, when he said jump, you jump. When he said get there and you're there off, you're there. Whatever the hell it is, you're there for that boss. But the minute the boss at home says, hey, honey, I don't like that. What the hell, hell do you mean? What the hell are you talking about? And he's the one that given you all the essential things that you need to be happy. I want to talk to you ladies. Are you in a relationship now where you're getting at least 50% of the help? You're, and I'm talking not only financial help, but support, emotional support. If you're getting 10% of emotional support, you're good because 10% is better than none. If you're getting help with the kids, he's entertaining the child. When you, when you need to go take a break, is he there enough time? If you're getting even 10% of any of that, you're better off than none. Think about it. And what you can do is you can still have him there and work and help him understand your needs a little bit more. Compromise. You know, you can say to him, listen, honey, I'm tired. I need you to spend a little bit more time with the kids on this hour, this hour, and this hour. Don't just say, hey, I need you to spend more time. You're not spending enough time with the kids. You say to him, hey, hon, listen, um, from this hour to this hour on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I would like to go to the gym and do a yoga class or aerobics class or go to the gym. Can you make sure that you're here on time to do that? Yeah, most men will just go, hey, baby, that's good. Yeah, no problem, man. That's better than suffering where you can't even take care of yourself. That's how we do it. That's how my wife and I do it. In the mornings, every other day, I take the kids to school. She goes to do her exercise, goes off to work. And then we alternate uh, the next day. I do Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. She does Tuesdays and Thursdays with kids drop off. I pick them up every day because she has a corporate job. I don't. I got more freedom. So I make sure that she don't have to stress about running from work to go and pick up the kids and oh, the boss is me. No, I take care of all that shit. Am I the perfect husband? Hell no. I could be an asshole. She tells me that all the time. But she compromise. Is she perfect? Hell no. She drives me insane sometimes. I've, 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 I've done my nights where I sleep on the couch. Feel very happy doing that sometimes. But you know what? After two or three days, we cool down, we come back together, we're good. And that's what we've been doing for 19 years. You can do it. Stay with your damn husband. Stay with your baby daddy. Because I'm telling you, these streets are freaking cold. Men ain't signing up to be stepfathers anymore. So don't ever think it's going to get better. Those days are gone. Trust me. All right. Subscribe, guys. And remember, whenever in doubt, always ask an older man. See you in the next one. Cheers.